Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. Let's meet your hosts, Chris Angel and Michael Mayer. Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Referrals Podcast. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, here with your host, Michael Mayer, and our guest, Cheryl Nolan. Ah. <laughs> how are we doing people how are we doing doing awesome doing awesome man welcome to another episode of referrals podcast there's people like losing bets out there they thought man you guys are going to do like 10 episodes and you're going to be done and nobody's going to listen nobody's going to watch and and actually that was just my mom mm. but here's the thing right is we are rocking it like the downloads are off the chart and uh, i love how much value that we are giving each and every week it's pretty cool when even I want to listen to my podcast. You know what I mean? I, I talk to people who have podcasts all the time and they're like, I go like, do you like listen to your podcast? And they're like, no, I already did it. You know, I did it when I did it. And I'm like, that's the problem I think in this world, right? Is that, is that we, we, we move on too quickly in everything, right? It's like you watch a movie and then you never watch it again. Why is that? Yeah, right? I mean, there's some movies that are just worth watching over and over. Slumdog Millionaire, right? Every time you watch it, there's depth to it, right? And the other thing is books. Like, why do we move on from books? You know, it's like, what if you read, instead of reading 12 different books this year, what if you read the same book 12 times? Yeah. Right? Take 7L and read it 12 times. I, I Trust me, the story will be different every time you read it. Yep. How to win friends and influence people. Read it 12 times this year. Yep. I read it every year. I've read it every year for 21 years and I will wow. read it again this year, period, right? Because I always get reminded or get something additional out of it. And it's just like, I just think there's, they're just, and I always get something out of our podcast yep. uh, every time I listen to it. So Yep. Uh, I'm loving this. This is, yep. this is, we're doubling down on the podcast, man. Yeah. I, I'd say a pro tip for those listening to podcast. Well, if you're, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, an avid podcast listener, you know this, but you can actually save podcast episodes. If you don't save it, right. It just like goes away and, and it, the podcast directory just says, you Oh, listen to it. That's right. yeah, it's just, it's out. But if you save it, you can keep going back to it over and over again, which I'll do for podcasts that really uh, inspire me. So yeah. find your favorite, you know, seven L um, referrals podcast episode and save it. So you can keep coming back to it. Well, let's jump in uh, today. You know, it's January and I want to talk to uh, both of you about the January call, like what this is. Um, I know ahead of time that it's not just for January, but we are framing it for January because it's a great time to actually do this, this call. So um, Cheryl, I, I, let me just say a couple things about you and Michael, you can add in whatever you'd like to say too, but Cheryl is a mortgage uh, lender out of Atlanta. Yes. Just outside of Atlanta. Is that yes. right, Cheryl? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. But you're from Canada actually. Yes. <laughs> That's so awesome. I love Canadians. Um, Cheryl served uh, as a trainer and a coach in many businesses, including real estate, mortgages, financial strategies, which I love. Which Cheryl and I got to talk about that. And she has some brilliant ideas about how to use mortgages in financial strategies. She's also done restaurant management training, flight services, and even figure skating, which is awesome. Um, it, she, what, Cheryl, you found Michael in 2014 through a Gen Gen event? Yes. Another... Another loan officer, actually, we, we had lunch together. That was Kelly Kirscher. And mm -hmm. she recommended the book. And I read the book. And then she told me about Michael's Gen Gen Masterminds. And I started going, fell in love with it. Went to an all-day ambassador event. Love that. And then Michael invited me to the uh, certified referral training, the, the very first one in January last year. And, and now you're a our entire funnel. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, that, that yeah. was fantastic. And now you're a certified referral trainer. So you actually are certified to teach on what we're going to talk about today, which is the January call. So if you guys listening to this want to bring Cheryl in to your organization to speak on this, she's certified for that. Um, and what was the other thing, Cheryl, in August, you got certified for another topic? Yes. Seven levels to the power note. Power note. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. Sorry. Seven, awesome. seven steps to the power note. <laughs> That's right. Which fits perfectly in with the January call. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And we'll talk about follow up during this. I can't wait. And Cheryl rocked it. Like, you know, Cheryl's growth in the last, you know, eight to 12 months has been, you know, fantastic. Like a lot of people that had some fear of public speaking, 
you know, she's great at coaching, mm. right? One on one and thing and and but the development that I have seen, she is a professional level speaker. Mm. And she is a professional speaker. And uh it 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 was it was amazing how she dropped in examples uh and stories into her 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 uh presentations. It it just it was so fun. It's been fun to watch. It's been fun to be a part of that. Well, let's, let's kind of start this off with what the January call is. And then maybe I know there's a, a story, Cheryl, that you shared with me before we hit record. Uh, maybe you can share that story just about how powerful uh, the January call is. So what is the January call? So the January call is, uh, January is a great time when realtors are or, or anybody that's in sales is just trying to get their year going. And it's a great way to, um, call you know uh, either your past client database or people that are in your sphere of influence and just get to know them on a deeper level find out things about them um and so and get, you'll find reasons why you need to call them back again yeah. and uh, and so it's just all about learning on a deeper level got it what you you did this um was it this year or you did it sometime when was it that you did this call well I always uh, send a quarterly handwritten power note to all of my past clients. So I do stay in touch with them. Yeah. I also have some automation with my CRM and then I'll call from time to time and just check in and see how everyone's doing and see what's new in their lives. But recently I had a client who I helped, I, I did was loan officer for their loan and a friend, realtor friend did, was the realtor on the, she was the buyer's agent. And this client reached out to me and wanted to know who would be a good realtor to list their home. And I said, well, what about so-and-so? And they said, oh, I didn't realize that she would do listings as well. And so I've you know, connected them, the home is listed now. I've done two open houses with her and I think somebody's going to see the house today. <laughs> that was their previous agent, right? Like they just didn't yes. know that their previous agent could also take listings and yeah. they hadn't called. And so they were about to look for some other agent, right? Yes. I That's love that story. Yeah. And that reminds me, we need to do a future podcast mm. on the spectrum of solutions because that happens more often than we would like is the client doesn't really realize that you can work yeah. with buyers and sellers and investment properties. And, you know, what are those spectrum of solutions that we can provide? So I, I love that Cheryl in this case, by staying in touch, yeah. could actually boomerang referral back to, right back to the original agent. And, you know, the, the beauty of the timing of this is you can do the January call, also called the generosity call mm -hmm. anytime. And, and, but, but when it really works well is December and January and somewhat into February because goal setting mm -hmm. and the year ahead is so fresh in people's minds. So these questions are, it, you know, if you ask somebody, Hey, what's your new year's resolution? on June 12th, it, it loses a little bit of its pizzazz, right? Yeah. And quite honestly, you probably don't want to bring it up because 99.9% .9 of the people uh, have probably not implemented what their new year, they've probably forgotten what their new year's resolution was. Right. But right now it's like, hey, do you make new, yeah. you know? So I yeah, think yeah. the big thing is the timing of this call is, is pertinent and it makes sense. And what you're really doing, like Cheryl said, is you're looking to build a relationship deeper and you are looking for ways to help. You're yep. looking for ways to wow and blow them away. And, and I think that's what will come out in today's, in today's podcast. It's just like you are so equipped yep. to wow them when you're done with this call. And it's very natural yeah. that, that really the, the ball is now in your court to wow them. I think that's one of the uh... – the objections you could get uh, if somebody listening to this is like, ah, but I don't know if I want to call. Maybe I'm interrupting them. Like this, the discomfort of calling because we've become such a texting or Facebook social media thing where we interact, but calling has a lot of power. I, Cheryl, you were talking about how people will often say like, eh, I don't know. And uh, should I call or not call? But you had some great perspective on that. Yes. So I remember in January when I was at the certified referral trainer, just, you know, play acting, oh, our phone is just so heavy. It's so hard to pick it up and call. But yeah, yeah. if people would just realize that, just think of it this way, who can I help today and look for ways to help. So let's yeah. play, let's play this out a little bit. I'm just going to call you okay. Chris, and, and 
Uh, hey, hey, Chris, how's it going? I haven't talked to you in a while. What's going on with you? Hey, lots of stuff's going on right now. Um, our, our marketing agency is growing like crazy and we've got a seven and a half month old puppy. And so that's crazy. It's like having a kid all over again. Uh, yeah, I mean, life's busy. That's awesome. What kind of puppy do you have? She is a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Her name is Ellie. Oh, I'll have to look that up. I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. Yes, they are a strong-headed breed, but uh, she, she's got, you know, both sweet, you know, appeal and then also like <laughs> ornery stubbornness. So That's awesome. It is. That's it's some adjusting for sure. So have you already figured out what your goals are for 2019? Any big goals that you have in mind? I have some goals. Um, yeah, I mean, mostly I just started thinking about that the other day. Um, and I'm now at like, I think... Uh, it feels like a stretch goal, but I really want to uh, help publish 100 shows this, this year. So 100 clients with 100 shows that, we, that we're producing for their podcast. It feels big, so I'm like, ugh. But, um, but it also kind of excites me at the same time. Yeah. Are there any areas of uh, business that you want to hone in on? I was wondering, like, is that something I might be able to help you with? Um, like what? Like, tell me, what do you mean? Well, I know you do these podcasts for Michael Mayer and that's, you know, it, it is uh, a lot of realtors and lenders listen to it. Um, anybody in sales ought to be listening to it because it really is uh, great for anybody yep. that is um, trying to uh, grow their referral business. But for you, is there any area that you'd love to get more information about or, you know, you, you say, oh, I'd love to do a pod. I'd love to interview somebody, do a podcast on this particular business or that particular business. Yeah, I, I guess two things come to mind when you say that. One is um, I love producing shows for clients who have what I call important work. So people who have beyond the transaction, they actually have a, an impact they want to make in the world. So for example, with Michael, he often talks about how he just feels like everybody should be referable. To me, that's not a real estate conversation or a lending conversation. That's a personal development conversation. And so that message is something I'm excited to produce. So if you know lenders or realtors or any business people who want to make an impact beyond the next transaction, those are people I'm interested in talking to because we're from the same tribe. So that's one thing that comes to mind. Awesome. Yeah. Well, how about yeah. any trips? Do you have any trips planned this year? Trips. Um, I do not have any trips. Uh, our mother-in-law, just my mother-in-law, my wife's mom just moved to Arizona. So that might be something maybe next uh, winter when it gets chilly here in Spokane again, that could be fun. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah I've never been there. So. Yeah. And uh, how about your, uh, your son that's a senior? Is he looking at colleges? He's actually an eighth grader right now. Um, and so next year he'll be heading into high school and getting his driver's permit and, you know, crazy stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That, it's crazy time when they, uh, it is crazy. His voice is starting to change and, <laughs> and parents don't know anything uh, uh, yeah. know, well, at that age. Yeah. 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 It's fun. <laughs> it's, it's fun right now. Right now at the window is pretty good. Like they're, my daughter is in seventh grade. He's in eighth grade. So they're like, they're in this window where like, you know, we're still, we're, we're still okay to hang out with, which is, which is good. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Looking at the year ahead, is there anybody in particular that you'd love to meet? Maybe I might come across somebody that, that I might be able to introduce you to. Anybody famous? Yeah, um, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm coming out here in January with my, uh, my new show called Important Work, and I was just listening to a podcast um, on the the startup podcast, and this they're doing a mini series on a public education, like or a school, a charter school, and um, uh, I can't remember her name now. It's somebody Makowitz, and um, she is incredible. Anybody that is a change maker that's doing really cool things in the world, I would love to interview them on my show. So if you know anybody that's up to really cool stuff, doesn't have to be business, it could yeah. be anything that's, that has an impact, then I would love to interview them. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. So, it, hey, it was great talking to you, Chris. Um, I, I, I'm going to connect with you again in a couple months. I'm gonna, I've got my radar on now and see how, who I can connect you to. I've got somebody in mind and I'm going to Check with Michael, see if he can make me help, uh, help me make that happen Thank for you, you because what you just said just brings somebody to mind. So Thank you. That's so awesome. Yeah, thanks, Cheryl. Great talking to you. Yeah, thanks for calling. I really like, enjoyed connecting. Yeah, I enjoyed talking to you too. Thanks, thanks right. for checking Take in. Care. That was fun. I enjoyed it on this end. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, we, we love talking about ourselves. Yeah, who doesn't right? love talking about what they're up to? And life? it helps us verbalize our goals, right? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be great if people were going around asking about our goals? 
You know what I mean? They just yeah. don't. I mean, how many people have asked you about your goals in the last year? Me and Cheryl now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, we did the call earlier with the podcast and yeah, then, yeah. and then Cheryl just did. And it's just like, I mean, these are the questions that I would love other people to ask me, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the power of it. So, so how did it feel as Cheryl was going through the call? Felt good. I was, uh, yeah, it felt good. I love how you verbalized and then re-verbalized your goal and what you were looking to do. You know, I don't, I, I don't know. You may want to go back through and listen to this, but it was kind of <laughs> interesting that you, you said, well, I don't know. And then you're like, yeah. Mm. And then I'm doing this show mm. called important people. And then this lady, and then it was like, who's, who's doing important work, you know? Yeah. And the next time somebody asked, mm -hmm. you're going to say, well, I'm looking for people who are looking, uh, doing important work. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. so you, you've kind of honed your, mm -hmm. uh, what you're really looking for, which helps you a ton down the road. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, it is good too. Cause I, I've seen that a lot where you'll ask people questions and the first response you get is a, is a re reflex. You're like, yeah, I don't know. But you dig again, like, like you did Cheryl, and then good stuff comes out. Yeah. 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 So great. Cheryl, is that a typical call? Is there anything you didn't ask that you might ask? Is there, um, you know, what, what, what felt weird about that call and what felt great about that call? You know, as a January call expert, you've done a lot of these. So. So I think what's weird is uh, that we're on a Zoom call and I'm looking at my computer screen. Normally <laughs> what I would be doing is maybe making some notes. Uh, and um, like when I think of that person that I'd like to, to connect you with, I might do that uh, when you talked about your goals. Um, and uh, always, yeah, I always write things down and then also plug it in. As soon as I get off the, my computer if, uh, or the phone, I'm also going to plug in a date of when I'm going to call you next so that it's on my calendar. I set a reminder. If I can't get to it that day, my reminder moves to the next day. And until I clear that reminder, it stays there. So uh, those of you that love paper, that's great. But if you don't do it that day, now you got to move it automatically. But if you do it on, I use a Google calendar and it automatically moves it to the next day so I can make sure that I get it done. So, so what is your immediate follow-up, right? So you just talked to Chris. One of the things that you do next is you update your CRM for a follow-up call. Correct. What else do you do with the information that you just got? Well, the next thing I'm going to do is write him a power note. Um, and think that's very, very Are you important. Just saying that? Are you just saying that or do you <laughs> really write him a power note? I'm going to write him a power note. <laughs> okay. So, it's very important. Unfortunately, we get let our day get away from us, um, especially say if you know you don't have that set time blocking uh, to write your power notes. And I have to admit, I I'm a great teacher when it comes to that. Uh, as far as an implementer, I'm not as great. Actually, Michael, I wish I if I had this computer upstairs in my office, I actually have a power note that's sitting there for you <laughs> and the refer code team. But anyway, it's you know it's very important to to acknowledge what you just talked about. And then for instance, if I found out that perhaps Chris's son was a senior and uh, now he's going to find out that he's getting accepted college in January, I'm gonna call, I mean, late January, early March or February rather, I'm gonna call back, I'm gonna find out what college they're going to. Hmm. And I'm gonna go out and get a bumper sticker or like, you know, um, like whatever university, uh, you know, that, that dad, that mom, um, and then also another thing I've done before is uh, when I go to check out at the, especially in the summertime at the grocery store, there's tennis balls sitting there. So if I've just spoken to somebody whose son or daughter is taking tennis lessons, I'm going to pick up that can of tennis balls. I'm going to write a power note and I'm going to go put it in their mailbox. Mm. Or if they're far away, I'm going to mail it to them because that would just be such a surprise to get something like that in your mailbox. And yeah. they would just really appreciate that you thought of them and that you acknowledged the fact you listened to them, that they were, their child was taking tennis lessons. That speaks volumes of how much you think about them. Working by referral is not some fairy tale world. It's real. I've seen it. And you can too. Invest in yourself by learning how to run your business by referral at Michael's upcoming live event. It will be a day filled with hands-on, how-to, low-to-no-cost strategies that you can implement in your business right away. Learn how to run a business by referral that not only feeds your family, but feeds your soul. 
Go to www.gengenevents.com today. That's www.gengenevents.com. I love that. I wanted to ask how you manage that. Like, so I can imagine like having, if I do five calls a day, let's say, and I start ha- having all of these details to try to remember of like um, how to look for, it's not just the, once the power notes done, that's cool. And that would like close that loop in my head. But yeah. there are these things that they said to me that I am trying to keep an eye out for. And then when I start adding multiple people to that, now I'm trying to keep my eyes out for all sorts of stuff. How do, is there any way that you have found to manage that that works well for you? Yes, uh, you, but. it's actually a technique that's in seven levels and you can do like, you can create like a ongoing Google search mm. and then oh, it'll nice. find something that they're interested in. It'll pop up in your, mm. in your, uh, in your Gmail. So that's Perfect. very helpful. I, I first tried it out on the Georgia wineries. Whoever thought that Georgia had good wine, right? Mm. There's 40, 40 wineries within an hour of my house wow. that actually ha- one of them's in the top 25. So, you know, just putting those Google searches, it'll from time to time pop up in my Gmail, hey, this event's going on there or this, you know, and if you have those, you can forward that to your client in an email because that might be something that you're interested in. Say, hey, this, you know, thought of you when I saw this article. And, and that, is a, that is a gem, right? So alerts.google.com. I have to tell you that I just, I've gotten several Facebook messages in the last few weeks about Google alerts and, and I probably have 10,000 active Google alerts right now. Wow. 10,000 that are going out every single day and checking for certain phrases. And then if it finds those phrases and it's current, it will email like handwritten note. Right. So I have a, I have a search on handwritten note. Anytime the word, the words handwritten note are in a blog or article or video, Hmm. then Google will send me it and, and give me how did handwritten note. And sometimes those are quotes like my quotes Hmm. that I don't even remember giving, you know, Hmm. I mean, it's been, and and the same thing with, uh, so I, I, I coach my son's basketball team. I uh, am teaching him a read and react offense and a five out offense and a type of offense. So I did a Google alert on the five out off. And, and so far I've learned that, hey, teams like Vermont run that offense. So then I go to YouTube and I Google uh, Vermont's offense so I can see it in action, hmm. right? So it, 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 the, the, the Google alerts is – the first thing you need to do is Google alert your own name, hmm. right? So That's doing awesome. a, a Google yeah. alert for your own name. Right. And, awesome. and then you'll know when people are talking about you. You know, so good or not talking about you. Right. (laughs) Right. right. So, um, that's great. I love that. Google your competitors. Right. And then Google your city real estate or your city mortgage Mm. and see what comes up. You know, Mm. Cheryl Nolan works in Atlanta mortgage. It's like Mm. Atlanta mortgages, like Mm. together just to see uh, mortgages in Atlanta, mortgages for Atlanta homes that, you know, those Google alerts and they can come back to you. Those are the ones you do for yourself. Then, you, like Cheryl said, is, is, you know, Chris Angel podcast, right? And then, and then that's going to, anytime you start, start a new podcast or upload one, she can get that. She can say, hey, it looks like you met some people that are imp- doing important work in the world. Thank you for the important work you're doing in the world. And, uh, you know, I do have someone in mind that I need to connect you to. Right, right, right. right? Yeah. That, that's, mm. that's a gem. I love right. that because the Google alerts kind of becomes a personal secretary of like sending you reminders of stuff that is relevant to whatever it is. And you don't have to remember it or think about it. It just will, once you set it up once and it just keeps pinging you, right? You yes. have important people in your life, right? Mm. And it's the beauty of the uh, uh, Google alerts is, is, that it's, is that it's what's important to the important people in your life is important to you, right? Yeah. yeah. So tennis, tennis balls, delivering the tennis balls to the, the person who's taking tennis lessons for the first time in 20 years or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Right. right. Yeah. Wow, so, so good. So Cheryl, good. what were some of the nuggets that you got out of listening to Chris, like from Chris's, you know, from that conversation that you had with Chris, what, what kind of seemed to, uh, what would you take out of that call? You know what I mean? Like what would you take and use for later? And, and that thing. Right. So it's turned on my reticular activator to 
find people of influence for him and that people that are trying to go beyond just the next transaction. Mm -hmm. And also because he wants to have a hundred podcasts, then find out somebody that is interested or that I could discuss that with them if they're wanting to grow their business through referrals and discuss, like it just makes me be the connector. And mm -hmm. so a lot of times when I'm, when I'm talking to uh, different people, oftentimes it's not about the mortgage or about the real estate. It's just being that connector and who, who can I connect them to when they want to find out some information. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. And if I don't know who I can connect them to, again, a Google alert, that's huge. But from that conversation, just now I'm going to be looking for people that really are making a difference in the world and connecting them with you. That's so awesome. I love it. Chris, Thank you for that. Max Mayer. On yeah. That show. He's got a party tomorrow. He's got a party, uh, the fundraiser that he's done and uh, where he did a like Toys for Tots fundraiser. Nice. So he had a pajama party, Polar yeah. Express. He's 10. Wow. That's right. Awesome. So maybe have a 10 year old that's making a difference or, or whatever. Maybe that, that might be yeah. a, inter I don't know if it'd be a good interview or not, but it was just something that I thought yeah. of that would be different than every yeah. other podcast that you see out there. Yeah. yeah. I love here. I, you know, it's so fun to hear different stories that people are involved in, whether it's 10 year olds doing toys for tots or just like these edges, the, the stories on the edges that you just don't normally hear. You're like, that is so inspiring. I love that. Yeah. I yeah. love that you're doing that. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, so, so the next step, Cheryl, is, is you've called Chris, you put the information in your notes, put it in your database, you put your follow-up call, you write your power note, and then, and then when do you take action on the connecting? Do you, do you wait until you're done with your calls? Do you, do you, start, do you start an email? Do you text? Do you call? What, what's next for the Chris Angel, in this case, uh, January call? So if something comes to mind right away, like a person that I know of, then I will probably uh, put that in, a t in the time block when it's time to take action. I'm probably going to finish my calls first, but I would write it down. Because for me, writing things down helps immensely. It just, uh, I've always heard that it creates um, the dendrites in your brain. You know, you have short-term memory and long-term memory. And by writing it, by actually physically writing it, it helps create that, uh, mm -hmm. that long-term memory. And, uh, and then also you can see it's visual, so you can see it. So depending on the type of learner that you are, but uh, anyway, then I, I, cause I, I was mentioning that it's really important to time block and get those tasks done in that time block that you intend to do because it's too easy to, okay, now I've got to go on to this and then not get back to making those calls. So then in your time block where you're taking action, then that's when I would take action. And I would, if I thought of somebody right away, I would pick up the phone and call them. If I couldn't reach them on the phone, then I would shoot them uh, a text or an email, depending on how they like to be contacted mm -hmm. and say, give me a call. I'd love to talk to you about something. What are the, um, what are the questions that you have on your sheet there? Sure. Uh, do you, uh, did you, did you make a new year's resolution? Mm -hmm. Any big plans or goals for the year? Any big trips or vacations planned for this year? And with that, Chris, I was kind of hoping you would say you wanted to go to, you know, Italy or Spain or oh. Australia. And probably then what I would have done is gotten on Amazon and ordered a book for you. <laughs> hey. And just surprise, you know. Uh, nice. You put a little gift note in there that says, um, thought you might want to do some research before you head to Australia or whatever the place may be. Yeah. Do you have a bucket list? What's on your bucket list? Mm -hmm. Or what would be on your bucket list? As you look at the year ahead, mm. what, um, what are you most looking forward to? Mm. What project excites you for this year the most? Mm -hmm. What's your biggest challenge right now? Mm. That's a good one because uh, especially if, you know, mm. there's ways that you might be able to help them with their biggest challenge or even just helping them talk through what that challenge might be and how, they yeah. can uh, overcome that challenge. It might be something that they already know how to do, but maybe it's just a matter of accountability. Or it might be something that you can help them with or connect them with someone that can help yeah. them. Chris, what is your questions. most exciting project for, for, ne for like the next year? Uh, the, the important work show that also dovetails with the 100 shows. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's like all my efforts are there right now. Yep. Yeah, I love the cyclical nature of that. You interview them, 
And then maybe they want to do a podcast. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it's a yeah. great way to meet interesting people who may want to uh, have important work. So that, that makes a lot of sense that you're using, you're using your tool and your trade to, yeah. uh, you know, to develop your business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah, a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. You got it, man. You, you, yeah. you, uh, you've been looking at my journal. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's good. I have seen your journal, by the way. It's all good. I, I'm like Santa Claus, baby. I'm uh, watching yeah. you while you sleep. Man. Yeah. Ew, that's so creepy. <laughs> that's uh, so creepy. Uh, you came up with that song. Uh, it's that like, is, dude, that is, don't yeah. be watching me while I'm sleeping. But I, what I love about these questions though, is, um, I can just tell you on the receiving end of it, so when I, let me say this, when I think about calling, that's not, I don't get good feelings in my stomach about calling, but when I'm mm -hmm. on the receiving end of what you just went through with me, Cheryl, I mean, it feels really good to, in being a conversation around those questions, I could, I don't even think families have these kinds of questions. Like what if, what if you started at using these same questions around the dinner table and having these questions with your family? You're like bucket oh list. Bucket, yeah. Do you know your mom's bucket list? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, no, most people don't know their parents' bucket list or brothers or sisters. Yeah. Uh, that's so date, true. That's, that's they're great date night questions, even. Um, <laughs> you know, like I was thinking um, one of the questions we like to ask in our family is like, what are you learning right now? Like, what are you learning? What's life teaching you right now? Because that, that question never gets old because life always evolves. But right. I just, I love the questions that you asked, Cheryl. I think they're so... Um, generous when you start to really and not just the generosity of the, the question and the listening but but that um the part i really loved was where you listen for something that you could actually send that was relevant to what they said like that just shows so much thought and i i don't do that i ask questions but i don't think like oh tennis balls that'd be a great thing like i just kind of move on but i just love that there's this moment and this memory that you can create the, the, the nice thing about them is it pinpoints how you can help the other, right? Getting tennis balls for somebody that only plays golf. Right, right, right. No function there, right? Yeah. But, but the, the nice thing is by asking these questions, you yeah. know exactly how the, to help the other. Now, you're not promising yeah. that you're going to connect people or you're going to get tennis balls or you're going to help them or whatever. You're not promising any of that, right? Yeah. You're, you're, but but you're, you're interested and you're learning more. And that in itself is a gift of generosity, right? Yeah. But then you are armed with this wonderful ammunition, if you will, yep. to make the relationship better, to surprise them, to wow them, to like, like she said, right? You find out they're going to Australia, you, you go get them a book on Amazon and send it to them, uh, a, a book on Amazon on Australia and you send it to them, right? As a gift. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's, you know, thought, uh, you know, generosity is love and action mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and that's generosity is it, it gives you you are armed with things you can do for generosity in that relationship all year long yeah yeah it's so good i love this well i think that's a great place to sort of wrap is there are there any last minute um words of wisdom cheryl for people who are wanting to take their um generosity calls to the next level like what like what's a good place to start and how do they make it better <laughs> just do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. It, That's a gem. Yeah. This conversation, this conversation that I have with this realtor that, uh, you know, she almost lost out on getting the listing. And I told her, why don't you do make these calls? Oh, well, they think I'm going to sell them. I just want to, you know, push real estate. No, you don't even talk about real estate. You just need to get to know them on a deeper level, you know, and, uh, had they done, had she done that sooner, she would have found out that this client's expecting and maybe, you know, Next time she's in the store and sees something little babyish, you know, drop that in the mail or just drop it by her in the mailbox with a little handwritten note. But um, they just need to pick up the phone. It's not so hard if you just look for a way to help other people or look for a way to get to know them on a deeper level. Uh, yeah. I've met with several realtors and taught them Michael's strategies. Highly recommend the book if I didn't have an extra one to give them. Because I tell them it's just, it's so easy if you just pick out one or two things, you will grow your business, your referral business, just by doing simple, small things where you're helping other people. But you have to make a point to do it. Either have coffee with a client, pick up the phone first of all and invite them to coffee. Hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. Let's just get together and have a cup of coffee. You get to know them on a deeper level. That's so good. I love it. Yeah, I think the well, system, what Cheryl's talking about is the system really 
allows and almost forces you to be the best case of yourself, mm, yeah. right? The best version of yourself because we all want to help. We just don't know how, right? We need to pick up the phone. Mm. And once we find out how we can help, we're not promising that we're going to help. Right. But when we do help, it's a pleasant surprise and yeah. it feels good on our part and it helps yeah. them. Oh, yeah. so good. Well, Cheryl, I, I know you're a certified referral trainer for Generosity Calls or the January Call, um, as well as Power Notes. If people wanted to hire you to come speak for them and or send you referrals for uh, home loans in the Georgia area, um, how can they reach you? So they can go to the ReferCo website, right, Michael? And, ReferCo.com uh, slash CRT, <laughs> I believe. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And um, I'm also licensed in Florida. So Perfect. Okay. note there, side note. But yes, I would absolutely love to do that. I'd love to speak in uh, offices. I, I can travel. I love to travel, as a matter of fact. But yes, uh, go to referco.com. And uh, good. Well, and Cheryl at CherylNolan.com. Is that, is that your email? Yes, it is uh, www.CherylNolan.com. My email address is Cheryl with an S, S H E R Y L, at Cheryl. Nolan, N O L A N dot com. Perfect. I love it. I love the it. Down, guys, the download for today is the script that uh, Cheryl went through with me. It's like. Show the script, Cheryl. Show the. I mean, it's literally scripted out for you, question yeah. by question, yep. with notes on what to say, right? Yep. So I, I love, love that. I love that. That so is guys, a great download. Yeah, you guys can get that at referralspodcast.com. Referralspodcast.com. Download uh, all the questions for your generosity calls. Um, and uh, Michael. Thank you. Great episode. Thank you for, hey, thank you for um, letting, letting Cheryl ask me questions. Like, you know, I mean, you, you kind of like tipped your hat for me there and um, that felt good. Thank you. That's what we do, right, Cheryl? I mean, the beauty of this is that we're doing stuff that's fun to do. We're helping others. And what's amazing is that then they refer us or help us. Yeah. You know, if, if, what if everybody did business this way? What if everybody lived this way? Right. With this whole generosity spirit and loving, appreciating and, yeah. and, you know, what if Christmas was every day, right? What if, I mean, that's really, the tennis balls were not a Christmas gift, but for Cheryl, it's like, you know what? It's Christmas on February 23rd when she got yeah. the tennis balls for the people and they probably felt better about the tennis ball than they did any Christmas gift, Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, you know, instead of 12 days of Christmas, let's just do 12 months of Christmas. <laughs> right? you know, I love it. That's perfect. Well, you all have a great uh, week listening to this and we will catch you in the next episode of Pearl's podcast. Cheryl and Michael, thanks for your time and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thank you.